Hey, John Zaremba here, and that's Ricky looking out the window. It's been about uh, 12 months since I did a one-year owner's review of this Sunlight 16BH Sport Camper, so I thought I'd come back and give you a two-year owner's review with some updates. Um, right off the bat, you should know that I'm extremely happy with this camper. It's one of the best things I've ever purchased. I have absolutely no regrets whatsoever. Um, but there are a few things that went wrong and some things that are worth mentioning from the last 12 months. So what I thought I would do is tell you um, some things that broke on the camper in the last 12 months, um, some things that I broke in the last 12 months, uh, some improvements I've made, some things I've changed and modified on the camper. Um, then I'll go over like my uh, top three least favorite design things on the camper. Um, and then the top three things I like a lot about it. So in the one year owner's review, it was a pretty long video. I went into detail about every little thing about it. So if you haven't seen that video, I recommend you watch it. You can find it um, on my channel here. Um, this one will be a bit shorter, but there are some things that you need to know about. So I thought I'd tell you. So with that being said, um, let's talk about the things that broke in the last 12 months. So the first thing that broke was the trailer jack on the outside. And it was still functional, but it got to a point where it wasn't extending all the way. Um, every month or so, it would lose about an inch of extension, and it just became a bit of a headache. So I replaced it with this one here, which is pretty much the same design, except it's got a crank on the top instead of the front. And um, because the crank is on the top, um, I wasn't able to use the handle because of the propane tanks. So it became a little bit of a headache. Ended up just replacing the crank with um, a fitting for my... Um, a cordless drill so that way whenever i'm extending the stabilizer jacks with the drill i can just raise and lower this with the same uh, extension it's pretty easy and this has worked out just fine so this is a more severe problem uh the leaf springs just uh, basically flattened out on the passenger side of the trailer um, i would be looking in the rearview mirror and just noticing that it was tilting um, to the passenger side so i um, ended up replacing the springs on both sides um, even though the driver's side was pretty much okay. I think um, this happened mainly because they used a pretty crappy quality steel in the, the leaf springs when they built the trailer. And then also, there's just generally more weight on the passenger side, especially if your refrigerator is loaded up. Um, you got stuff under your dinettes, the cabinets um, above the dinette. All that just adds to more weight on the, uh, on the passenger side of the trailer. So Replaced them both. It wasn't that terrible job. It was just a bit of a nuisance to have to do it. Um, that's probably the biggest problem I've had with this thing in the last 12 months. I'm going to mention one other thing, but it isn't really the fault of uh, Sunset Park sunlight at all. Let me talk about that next. So this Dometic toilet started to leak. Now, it didn't leak around the base where like there was, you know, sewage or nastiness from the black tank coming out inside the trailer or anything like that. But the way this is, is molded, it's a, like a two-piece plastic, you know, there's like a pedestal and then a piece of plastic on top of it. And there, there's a, I guess you'd call it a gasket. I don't think it's really even a gasket. There's a, something that is supposed to keep the waste water from going into the base of it. And it wasn't doing its job. In fact, there, this is kind of like a known defect on these Dometic toilets. Uh, so... It started to stink. It was awful. And I couldn't figure out where the smell was coming from. And I basically just, I thought it was my tanks. I thought there was some other problem. It ended up just being that seal between the two pieces of plastic. So for this one, um, I contacted Dometic and the toilet was still under warranty, thankfully. So they replaced it for free. They sent me one out. I didn't pay anything for it at all. And um, I swapped it out. It's very easy to, to take these things out. It's way easier than a toilet in your house. Let me tell you that. Um, very simple process, and this one has been in here for almost a year. Like that, that happened shortly after that one-year owner's review video. So it's not caused any problems whatsoever. It's been working just fine. So I think they just kind of fixed the design in the newer ones, and um, thankfully it didn't cost me anything. So that was uh, something that broke, but uh, was easily uh, rectified. All right, talking about some things that I broke, things that I screwed up. The biggest thing is with the water supply in this trailer. Um, you might have seen my other videos where I talk about not winterizing and my techniques to avoid having to put the antifreeze through everything. Because I use this camper all in the winter. I, I camp in the winter. I don't camp in the summer. Um, I screwed up. I forgot to drain the water. Um, we had a major freeze here in Tennessee. 
and um, it uh, cracked the water heater um, right at the fittings uh, where the cold line connects. And um, it's spraying water everywhere once I put some pressure on it. Um, so I ended up replacing the water heater um, with the same exact model. I've got a whole video on that. You could check it out if you're curious. So this was, was certainly my fault. The water heater worked perfectly fine. I never had a single problem with it. Um, and I'm kind of irritated at myself for forgetting to drain the water from it before the big freeze. So, yeah, that was my bad. So the other casualty of that big freeze was the outside shower. Um, the one that this came with was all plastic. And um, it just cracked to pieces because I left the water in the lines. Again, my fault. Um, but what I replaced it with, I do like a lot better. This is an all metal construction. It's got better um, fittings on it. And then this uh, shower head part swivels and it's on a flexible hose. So it's way easier to pack up in here and close the door. And it just makes it a nicer, uh, just a nicer thing to use. I don't use this often. I think I've only used it two or three times, but it's, it's always been a nuisance with that inflexible um, shower head that was on the outside wrapping it back up in there and there's only a matter of time that it probably cracked anyways just from the way you got you got to put it away inside here so this is a much better improvement in my opinion and that leads me to uh some improvements i made in the last 12 months um the first thing is all of the plumbing updates that i made um i got some other videos about upgrading the fittings on these plumbing connections um i just basically completed what i ended up starting I put um, a shutoff valve um, here on the hot water tank. Like I said, I don't winterize, so I don't need all that apparatus. There was almost like a little manifold on this thing out of plastic before. And those plastic things always leaked. So this way I've got a nice secure uh, brass connection with a shutoff valve. And then I went with the push to connect fittings that bring that all together. Um, you may have seen some of this work that I did in a previous video, but for the outside shower, um, I went ahead and updated the fittings there as well. So I've got brass connections where it goes to the shower faucet on the outside. And then you can see the hot and cold lines both have shut off valves as well. So I could very easily turn the water on and off on the outside shower if I want to, which is what I'll be doing in the future. I'll just keep that turned off right here until I need to use it. So that way there'll never be any water in those lines to uh, potentially cause a freezing problem if I forget to do what's right again. I removed the closet that used to be on this side. And uh, normally the way this, this trailer is set up is your bed is pushed against that wall with your pillows there. Um, I hated that. It drove me nuts that my head kept hitting the little emergency latch on the window. Um, I didn't like it at all. So took the, I uh, took the closet out altogether. I just removed it and you could kind of see that it used to be there. But for the most part, I think it looks pretty nice that way. And then I relocated my tv up here and i've got the tv on a swivel so i could turn it around to look at it from the dinette or i could just have it facing me when i'm watching tv in bed and then all the space down below um, i just use for storing blankets and other pillows and stuff like that so this worked out better for a lot of reasons the other thing is you can see i've got like a little nightstand here on the dinette now a place to charge my phone put my eyeglasses and all that little pockets here um, I've got a whole video on this closet removal and TV relocation and all that. If you want to see how I wired it all up and whatever, um, you can check that out. But uh, this was uh, one of the most major improvements I think I made is uh, putting a TV there and just getting a more comfortable place to sleep. There's really not much to show here, but I did replace the mattress. Um, the one it came with, I got to tell you, it was so darn comfortable, but um, it did wear out pretty quick. It was, it was great for the first year. Um, I like having an old fashioned spring mattress for some reason, um, but it did not hold up. I think the, the fabric that was wrapped around the springs just uh, gave way. So um, new mattress fits fine and is much more comfortable. I added drawers uh, to the storage underneath the dinette. Um, before putting these drawers in, you had to take the seat cushions off as a piece of plywood underneath those and find somewhere to put all this stuff as you dug around underneath. Uh, in these little compartments and it was a headache. I, I hated doing it and I use these, I store a lot of stuff in here. Um, so having drawers made it so much easier just to give you an idea. They just slide right out. Um, I've got all my tools in here. This is the heavier of the two. I've got some extra plumbing bits in case I need it. Ratchet set, all that kind of stuff. Um, put handles on the front and then 
there's little feet on the bottom so that way it doesn't uh, scrape up the, the flooring whenever I drag them in and out. These do not move at all in transit. They're very sturdy. I think because they're just so full of stuff. So I don't have like a track on it or anything. They basically just slide in and slide out. I've got a little electric space heater in here, a little fan, vacuum and stuff like that. Um, I made a whole video on, on building these drawers and the process and everything. So check that out if you're curious, if you want to do something like this for your camper. Um, it wasn't hard. It was just time consuming. And um, the thing that kind of made me happy to do it is I was able to get a piece of the uh, factory paneling for the door, the, the uh, drawer fronts. So this way, when it's all together, it does kind of look factory. You know, you wouldn't necessarily notice that this was a homemade solution. So another seemingly minor thing that's made a big difference in my enjoyment of the camper is replacing the foam in uh, these dinette cushions. The foam that was in these things from the factory, it, it just didn't do much for me. It, after a year, just sitting on it, my butt went right to the wood underneath. It was like no comfort at all. I was like sitting on a park bench. Worse, it was actually worse than a park bench. But uh, this, fo this foam is much more firm. So it's much more comfortable to sit here and uh, work on my computer or just eat dinner or watch TV for long periods of time. Way, way, way more comfortable. So that covers the main improvements I made in the last 12 months. Um, a few little small things that aren't worth mentioning in the video, but that's the big stuff. Now let's talk about the things that I dislike about this camper. Um, these are things that I didn't like after one year, and I really dislike them after having it for two years. And the first one is this water pump. Now you can see mine's all wrapped up with heat tape because like I said, I use this throughout the winter. That's not the issue. Um, the issue is, for one, the location. It's uh, so close to the wall inside and the water tank itself that they had to use all these different elbow fittings to get the, the water from the pump to the line that goes inside the trailer. And I understand why they did that. I mean, if there's a nice big opening here. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But if they, if they wanted to put it in a more practical place, like right here, for example, it would block this storage. Now, I get it. And, and it's nice having pass through storage. There's a chance they could have put it over there, but there's actually even less room in this little spot here to fit it. So putting it inside is not an option because right here is the hot water tank. So there's no room inside underneath the sink and all that to put it. They kind of didn't have much of a choice. Um, I, I just hate where it's located because, because of the way that this plumbing has to go, these fittings are always under a certain amount of, uh, it's like pressure. They're being bent and they shouldn't be. So I'm always tightening up these fittings. Um, it drives me nuts. I hate it. I'm going to try to find a solution for this. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to think through the problem a little bit. It might just be a matter of just getting a different water pump. Maybe one that's got different fittings that are uh, better quality or that are in a different location. Like if the fitting was further, not big old finger, the fitting was further back over here, you know, then, then it'd be a, a nice S curve to make, you know, it would just work better where that's at. Now it's problematic. It drips and um, I tighten it up every trip. So it doesn't drip. Second thing I hate is this toilet step. I, I don't know why they couldn't figure out a way to run the drains for this thing in such a way that doesn't require this little step here. I'm five foot 10, I'm not a small person, uh, but I still have to use this little toddler steppy stool thing when I go to the bathroom in this. It's, it's embarrassing and humiliating. I have to pull that thing out and set it there like I'm four years old. Um, I do not like this step at all. It drives me insane. Some people don't have a problem with it. It bothers me. I wish it wasn't there. I wish they could have figured out a way to do it. In fact, I know they could figure out a way to do it because there's many other trailers with a toilet in this exact location that do not have this type of step. So that's a bummer. And the third and final thing that I really dislike about this trailer is the air conditioning unit. Um, I would camp in the summer if this thing wasn't so darn loud. It, it's effective, don't get me wrong. It, it cools this thing down. It turns this into a refrigerator in like a matter of minutes. It's a really powerful uh, uh, air conditioning unit, but it's probably more powerful than is necessary for this small space. Um, when I'm in bed and this thing's running, it's just like a jet airplane over top and um, I can't sleep with it on. 
So if I'm here, if I'm in here in the summertime, in the daytime and I use it, it's not a big deal. I could deal with it, but I can't sleep with this on. I'd much prefer that there was a, um, a wall unit like they have on the Sunlight 149, the smaller version of this. A wall unit would just be so much better. It'd be cheaper to replace. It would be just as effective because it's a small trailer in the, in the first place. And um, it certainly wouldn't be so loud. All right, now talking about my favorite things about this trailer. Um, I can go on forever. Quite honestly, um, I'll try to keep this as short as possible. The size and maneuverability is definitely my favorite thing about it. Um, for a uh, basically 17 foot trailer with a 14 foot of living space inside, um, there's so much packed in here and yet it's not super heavy. Um, it tows wonderfully, uh, it really just tows well. Um, I like the fact that I got the sport package. so. I've got more, uh, obviously, durable tires. I replaced those a year ago. That's another story. You probably saw that in the previous video. But the, the fact that it's just raised up a little bit because the axles flipped gives me more clearance, uh, better angles. So if I do go off-road with it, nothing serious, nothing crazy. But I, I certainly have been down some pretty rough dirt roads and dragged it through the desert where there really aren't roads. And um, it's just handled well. Uh, it, it's easy to, to back up. It's easy to uh, see around it when you're going down the highway. Everything about the size is just perfect for me. I mentioned the pass through storage earlier. I really, really like having it though. I've got so much stuff loaded up in the front of this thing. I mean, you can't even see the other side because I got so much stuff in here, but I got my solar panels that fit. I've got um, the chair. There's a table underneath there. I got all my stuff in this thing here. This is like my grill supplies got water tanks these are empty right now but they could be full got a carpet um way on the other side is i got all the, the blocks and uh, the the apparatus to set up and tear down each time i go to a campsite um it's just got a lot of storage here on the outside and that continues inside as well got a pass through storage here if i want to get to all that stuff that i've got in there I've got a way to access it like i said i got the storage under the dinette which is really helpful Got these cabinets above the dinette as well. Um, I've got a pack full of stuff. Pots and pans are over here. So it's really nice having that extra storage above. Then these cabinets uh, really make all of the world of difference. But um, this is where I normally keep all my clothing. It's empty right now because I'm at home. There's a pair of socks back there. <laughs> I didn't realize those are back there. I'll grab those socks while I'm in here making this video. But um, there's lots of space uh, to keep everything you want. And then you got some more storage above here as well. Uh, again, this is pretty empty because I'm at home, but I normally keep any dry food in here. I got a little coffee maker and stuff like that. There's even room for a trash can, which is nice. And then you got a drawer here too, keeping silverware, plasticware, and stuff like that. I guess this is for spice. I don't use it for spice. I use it to hold this bungee cord. Because when I'm driving down the road, I wrap the bungee cord around these doors here to keep the keep all three of those things from opening up. And then uh, the refrigerator gives you extra storage as well. I mean, it's a massive refrigerator for this thing. So storage all around is really, really, really good for this trailer. Speaking of the refrigerator, this is also one of my favorite things about it. I don't know that you get one of these. In fact, I'm pretty sure you don't get one of these. It's, it's almost hard to get one of these on any trailer nowadays. But this is a uh, both gas and electric fridge. So because it runs on propane, um, it allows me to go boondocking and not have to have a massive solar package or anything like that to uh, keep my food cold. I did a little video where I tested uh, how long uh, this fridge will run on just one standard propane bottle. So you could check that out and see it. Um, it, it lasts forever, <laughs> basically. But um, this is really, really a helpful thing uh, just because I go out in the middle of the desert sometimes and it's nice to have uh, frozen food when I'm out there. That brings me to the oven. Um, it's surprising how rare it is nowadays to get a trailer, especially this size, with a uh, gas oven and a big stove. I don't really need three burners, but I'll take the three burners. Um, I really do like having this oven. I use it all the time. Um, it's a great thing to uh, store <laughs> store pots and pans in, I guess, but it's also a great thing to have for making a pizza or anything you cook in an oven. It's nice. Again, along those same lines, uh, this is a big sink uh, for 
a trailer this size. I keep saying for a trailer for this size, for a trailer for this size, but it's big. I mean, I don't know. What is that? Like it's a good 10 inches deep. And, um, it's just a giant, giant sink. Um, I've got like a board that goes over top of it. So you could use that if you want to uh, get a little bit more prep space or whatever. Um, I generally use this thing that rolls out. Um, and this is nice too, because if you've got like hot pots or pans, you can set them on it and it won't melt or burn anything. Um, so the sink is great in this. I like having this dry bath. It's one of the main reasons I chose this camper to begin with. Um, the shower is small, but it's uh, certainly functional. Gets the job done. And um, the toilet is separate from that. Most small trailers, you're going to get a wet bath. And um, it's kind of rare to have something this small and maneuverable with a separate toilet from the shower. I really like having two awnings. You got one on the back here. So this comes out to uh, cover the rear door. If it's raining and you're going in and out, this is a great way to keep water from getting inside the camper. And then I'm parked right up against my uh, carport here, but you can see there's another longer awning on the passenger side. And then the benefit of this is I could open up that window and I'm have an awning out if it's raining. So I can still get some ventilation, even if it's wet outside. It's nice having two. Um, again, small camper, you don't normally get two awnings. You're lucky if you get even one. And now these awnings have worked fine. They're electric powered. You know, the motors on them have been perfectly fine. I've had no issues with the awnings in the last two years. So all these things have uh, basically pointed to value for money. You just get so much more for your money with this camper than any other. Um, the last thing I'm going to mention is the looks of it. I said this in the one year video as well. I love the look of this thing. It is like a little cabin in here. It's a uh, very warm and welcoming. I like the paneling. I'm a woody kind of guy. I like wood in general. This is fake wood, but it's a realistic looking fake wood. And um, if you're wondering, all these panels and stuff like that have held up perfectly. I mean, they look as good as they did when they were brand new. Um, there's no no uh, bubbling or tearing of the, the, it's almost like a paper that covers these things. Um, there's no tearing of that. Um, none of the seams have broken. Um, all of the fit and finish of this trailer um, has been great. All the corners are still good. No problems with any of that at all. Like even up underneath this cabinet, this is a spot where a lot of these things would shift around and um, it's been great. So very, very happy with the way this thing looks and feels when you're inside it. It's a very, very nice place to be. And the same thing goes for the outside. Everything is held up really, really well outside. No problems with any of the seams. I haven't had to replace any of the seals or anything like that yet. Um, in the last year, we probably probably towed this about six or 7,000 miles. We always go one big trip out west, which is at least a 5,000 mile trip out west, and a bunch of more local trips. Um, every month I'm going once or twice. So I'd say about 7,000 miles. Um, favorite thing on the outside is just, again, how well it's made. No problems with anything, all of the seals, other than the, the uh, leaf spring. I will, uh, that was a problem. Other than the leaf spring, everything outside is held up uh, really, really well. All right. Well, that's it. I appreciate you watching this video. Um, like I said at the beginning, this is one of the best things I've ever purchased. I'm extremely happy with this trailer. Um, I should mention this is a 2022 model. I should have said that at the beginning, honestly. Uh, the 2024s are a little bit different, but they're basically the same. I think you're going to get a different refrigerator, but you're also going to get a standard uh, solar package with most of them, which is a really cool thing. Um, I've got some portable panels that I use, um, which are nice. They connect right to the battery, but it'd be really nice to have a setup on the roof with a good charge controller and an upgraded battery and all that kind of stuff. So there's some pluses to getting one of the newer ones. But um, anyways, again, thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions about the trailer or my experience with it, leave a comment below and uh, check out my other videos if you've got some time. And I appreciate you watching. Take care.